we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Deerfield Senior Housing Ad Hoc Committee meeting of this fabulous Thursday, March 28th. And the time is 7.03 in your time zone. Um, to get going, I'm going to remind everybody that certain meetings normally held municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access where required public participation provided in accordance with House Bill Number 50 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, master of laws, Chapter 38, Section 20 until March 31st, 2025. And our meetings are um, recorded and then rebroadcast on FCAT's uh, YouTube channel and uh, Zoom Links are in the agenda. So call to order at 7.03. Um, and I will take a roll call. Carolyn Ness? Here. Pam Predmore? Here. Kathy Sylvester? Kathy here. Lily Dwight? Here. And we have a special guest tonight, Rachel Loeffler from Berkshire Design. Thank you, Rachel. Ooh, where'd you go? Oh, okay. Oh, I know what it is. My view, I need to switch to gallery view. When I talk, everybody else disappears and that's horrible. Okay. Um, so we're gonna what I would like to do um is I guess we can Rachel can stay. What we want to do is talk about what we learned from the open house tonight, but I was sort of hoping that if Rachel had updates for us that she could go home, but it would be good to have her here for that. So let's do our minutes. Let's do our administrivia. Pam, did you finally get to read the fabulous February 15th minutes? Yes, I did. And I approve them. Okay. And I second that. You, oh. you moved to approve. All those in favor. I, Carolyn. I, Lily. I, Pam. I think only Pam and I vote because we were the only two there. But anyway, so... Right. You no, know, if you read them, you can vote. Oh, okay. Oh, then hi, Kathy. Thank you. And Kathy, remember, don't check them off. Just put a colon approved. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Because it crosses them out. All right. And what about the minutes from the open house, which, Kathy, I salute you. You did, a, I thought, a great job. Um, I think you did a lot of that. <laughs> it looked to me. <laughs> no, no, no. I just, I just fit, tweaked a couple of things that... Um, it, things got confusing. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes for the open house. So moved, Kathy. Second, Carolyn. All right. All those in favor, Pam Predmore. Aye. Lily Dwight. Aye. Kathy Sylvester. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Aye. Excellent. Okay. So um, what what I would like to do, I think is begin with Rachel and ask Rachel what um, what are some of the big takeaways for her in from the open house? And then I'm gonna call on each of you, okay? So that we have, all get a chance. So Rachel, would you like to begin the show? Sure, um, I could share screen, is that okay? Oh, if I give you permission, it is. Hang on yes. a second. And you don't have to scream this time. <laughs> Right. I'm sorry about that. That's no, I, really, I feel uh, terrible for you. Oh. I need like a vocal cord. Lily, I need you to be my vocal cord coach. <laughs> <laughs> we, can be, we can be in a park and you can teach me to speak. How to like, <laughs> and it, yeah, it, it helps to speak. swallow the mic when you're in those situations. Yeah. You got to just put it right up to your mouth. Well, yeah. some, some people came up afterward and they said that they don't like being screamed at. But they, they want to be heard and they, they stopped. They were getting frustrated with someone who was speaking really loud, but they had to scream. And that, that was also equally frustrating. That was like, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's true. There's so much screaming on TV now. Yeah. Anyway, this, you have the you have the share of power. Okay, here we go. Um, Excellent. Okay. So uh, I just dropped into our shared folder, uh, another folder from, I named it from um, the public meeting and gave it a date. In there, I uh, we Austin Design took a photo of our dots where you live. Oh, map. great! So we have that, and then we uh, had people from all over, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, actually. Good. Um, some of the the you know the white pins didn't mm -hmm. photograph as well, but some of the dots. There's a concentration here in South yep. Deerfield. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
but they go all the way north. Yeah. And then there's one dot over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another dot over there. Um, yeah, that was a good. You don't have my dot. My dot is way at the top. Where's oh, your dot? Where's you... it's it up, up. See that road? Uh, upper road parallels ninety one. Uh, yeah. West, and then Old Albany Road. Oh. You didn't. You were supposed to put your own dot on, Carolyn. I I thought I did. It. They may have. They might have fallen off. Grabbing okay. grabbing these pins before we took the photo, so maybe. <laughs> no, that's okay. I was just gonna anyway. say. That's I represented cool. the upper part there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we scanned in all the all the comments, the comment cards we oh, used. Wonderful. So this is the one at the end that um he was talking about public and right. private. John Pachor. Yeah. Yeah, but his two written comments were to maintain the ball field so that you could see youth playing, um, and keeping the church was important. A lot of people wanted to keep the church. Um Bob Decker's offer to take the rectory and possibly mm. move the church if needed. Um, somebody once says it's possible to re it makes sense to relocate the ball field. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we took photos of these boards of um, the comments that, that people right. made. So we've got, we've got that here too. Um, I think about the ball field. I, it's not that people want to save the ball field per se. It's it's because they're so worried that if they give up the ball field, that there would not be a replacement ball field. And that's that's where we got to come in and say, you know, if if we did do something on the ball field, once the old, like the old town hall is ripped down, we would certainly put a ball field over on Brayburn or something like that if we could, you know. But, you know, Carolyn, I got to say, it it would be nice for people living on the St. James property to be able to go out on their porches and watch a game, too. So, oh, I mean, yeah. I know I'm not saying also, if we have concerts yeah. there or whatever. Yeah. As long as there's community activity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the comments are there. And then um, we took some photos there. That, so. The, the photos that were in the paper or I don't know what happened they don't look very nice I don't I don't know what happened but um we do have some photos of the actual mylars um and then we also scan we also scan those in so we have that for record mm -hmm. um this is option one with the background image coming through so these are the resource areas coming through this is option one um option I guess two. Yeah, two. yeah that was, yeah, tear, tear them all down. And yeah. this is two with the background and then three and three with the background. Okay. Um, so we, I mean, and then I have, I have a test fit to show you too after we talk, but um, it did seem like, it did seem like people really liked number one um, yeah. because it preserves this part. And um, I think people also like the idea of keeping the church. I guess it was all over that on that, but um, having something that was kind of contained to that area seemed seemed like a preference. Um, and that was twenty four units, right? Twenty five. So we had twenty two here and three in the church. Okay. Um, That's on the. Yeah. Why well, can't? Can you go to that other one? That one you just did. That elbow. So. Is there a reason we can't turn that rectory thing with give it a little elbow and L? Uh, go back to option one now. Mm -hmm. That's option two. There you go. So this one, could we stick an elbow out of that runs along the 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 bloody brook a little bit? We could. We right now we're showing twenty five parking spaces. Huh. So um, then That's we're going to be under problem. under the parking. It's we have, yeah. we're in a three-way tug of war, <laughs> riverfront yep. area, parking space, number of units. Um, yep. Okay. Thank you for um, reminding me. Yeah. That and then sense. this is option two, which had 30 units, and but then had relied on circulation through the main town parcel. Um, and then option three was redeveloping the rectory in St. James and then adding um, I think it was 25 or 22 units up here, 22 to 25 units up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I'll stop talking and let other people talk now. Um, well, thank you for putting all of that up there. I, uh, yeah. So let's walk through it. Um, Pam, did, what, what, what were your takeaways from the open house? Um, I'm not sure I'm ready to speak yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kathy, are you ready to speak? Sure. I'm, I'm not sure, um, you know, how much option one was preferred by majority versus those are the people that spoke, because I think the people that don't care were nervous to say it, that they didn't care if we kept the church or not. What they wanted was, um, you know, an appropriate size development for senior housing that fit into uh, the look of the town. And uh, people came up to me after the meeting to say that they did not value keeping the church. So I, I don't know. It's hard to say, you know, what the majority really wanted. And so that was my takeaway. I mean, I think it'd be great to keep the church. I don't think anybody would be opposed to that for sure. If we, if it was financially feasible, right. But if it's not financially feasible, I'm not sure that there's a huge number. I mean, maybe there is, I, I didn't get, I don't feel like we really got a good sense of that. Honestly, as the people that it, that don't care came up after the fact to say something to me, at least a couple, at least two people did anyway. So that was my takeaway. It was like, I, I, I think that people want the senior housing on the St. James property and not the ball field. I do feel like that's true. I not also, for the record, I also had a couple of people come up to me and say, um, I don't care about that church, tear it down if it means we can have more housing. And I said, oh. did you say that in the meeting? And they said, no. They're afraid to look at them. <laughs> well, they're afraid to. I yeah. know. That's why we did the comment cards. And we're going to go down the comment cards, you know, so. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I just want to, I want to reinforce, they could have been the same people who talked to you, Kathy, but <laughs> who that, knows? That, that could be. Um, yeah. I know one person who told me before the meeting that she didn't care and at the meeting she voted for option one and and probably because she doesn't really care but it'd be nice to have the church because it, it you know it's got a nice new england look and if it was feasible it would it'd be nice but okay i'm i'm worried how much that's going to jack the price up yeah um, Carolyn, what did, what did you? I, I felt it was a mix, mixed bag on which option. I, I think there was no question people wanted us to move forward with senior housing. And um, I, I don't, some, it's, some people felt they wanted to save the church, some people didn't. But in the bottom line was let's have senior housing. So I, I actually feel like what Kathy is saying and what you are saying is just people when they spoke to me and I spoke to everybody sort of just off to the side and it was, I, I truly think it was a mixed bag. Um, and I don't, it's not that people don't want to save the church. If they can save the church, I think there was, yeah, go for it. But it wasn't overwhelming one way or the other as is, but the bottom line being, we need to have senior housing move forward with senior housing. So, I mean, I, I felt that message was very clear. And that's why um, people wanted, they weren't interested in option three because that entire would tie up the rest of the campus. Mm -hmm. And that was clear that when you did option three, you're ha you, you know, you're going through different buildings, you gotta, you know, there was gonna be more complications. Mm -hmm. This was just work on St. John James property and move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really, um, 
Are you I'm ready, ready, Sam? I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had a couple of people who said um, to that option, quote, option one is really the only one that, that will work for us. Who us is, I'm not sure. Um, I think if we can save the church, if at all possible, um, that's a good idea. It's similar to Sanderson Place in that, you know, some folks wanted to save the, the farmhouse. Um, although, having said that, um, I like the Kathy's suggestion of trying to figure out if there's a way to make an L off of the back of the, yes, um, is there a way to move some of the parking further out? Yes, along that area instead, you know, yeah, you'd lose a tree. Um, I don't know, because I don't know anything about sports, um, how far out you have to have for to maintain the ball field. If it's just that that sort of semicircular section there, then that gives us a lot more space to to work with. Plus, I think it would be delightful to have uh, senior housing units that overlooked the Bloody Brook and that area there, green space, in other words. That was Lily's idea, not mine, but that's I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. All right. It's, it's, I, I, this is like my fourth meeting today, Carolyn. I don't know how you do it, but. <laughs> well, okay. I'd like to say that Nick Miller today thought we could get some extra capacity in the river and the Bloody Brook. Mm -hmm. um, so that might change the floodplain just a little bit so we could have more building space. I mean, he's going to, he has to write up his report. He has to do all this, but, you know, he thinks if we, for sure the culvert that that you identified rachel as um needs to be replacing it's just that there's a couple other culverts further up that co constitute issues too so he's going to look at the wetlands and see if we can get more capacity in the wetlands you know bleed off the wetlands a little bit further up um and so um that might give us a little bit more building capacity on that st james how long carolyn if if something like that happens, like we develop wetlands further up Bloody Brook so that they capture it more, how long does it take for, I, I would imagine it would take a couple of years for the, um, like the plants to change enough to be able to certify the different flood levels, Rachel, does that sound right? I think it becomes a volume calculation. Um, it is probably would be compensatory storage. So we would, someone probably, someone would be calculating every foot of elevation and the volume of soil that we would be taking out for that elevation. Um, and then we could fill in that same elevation, that same, a portion of that volume. Um, so that's how it's sort of like a balance, a cut, cut and fill balance. He did, he did walk out to the park where we were, thinking of putting out infrastructure there, mm -hmm. uh, capac some capacity. But he's not entirely sure that the water um, all feeds into Bloody Brook. So, I mean, there's a lot of, yeah. it's gonna take a month or more for him to get his report together. He's gonna report it to the MVP group, but we're, we're putting in for the culvert at that place, you know, um, right there. That's good. Which so it would happen in the summer, maybe. What's his so, first name again, Mr. Miller? Nick Miller. Nick, Nick Miller. Miller. Nick Miller of field geology. Okay. Um, he's a fluvial geologist. He's a fluvio geomorphologist. Evans. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring us back to the open house. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Um, sorry. That's all right. It's all it is all a part of understanding what we can do. Um, one of the things that um, Melody uh, Clark approached me, and we sat down in front of um, 
something like this. Or actually, Rachel, can you go back to the other image? The uh, the existing. There we go. This thing. So what Melody said to me was, um, she said the property line is a lot closer than it looks in these things. She said, I can take a broomstick and poke it out my dining room window and hit the wall of the church. I, I don't see how that's true because- But, well, I, but just hang on, okay. <laughs> let me finish, <laughs> okay. No, 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 I mean, I did check that because I was horrified. I said, oh, no wonder she doesn't, is upset. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but I guess we really got to get this property line um, figured out. And Rachel, I was wondering if you haven't heard from uh, Eaton yet. No, I think Christopher was going to reach out to them. Christopher, um, the town planner. Um, All right. There's quite, will... Lily, there's quite a lot of space between the, the house and the St. James. Well, it looks like it on like... this, but... She's... No, no, I, I checked it. I checked it. Oh, oh, you walked it? No, I didn't walk it, but I pulled off the the oh, road okay. and I looked and I said, oh my gosh, that's, I don't know, it's like at least 25 feet or 30 okay. feet. Because she also said that the property line curves around her house. But anyway, so we'll have to get that figured out. But my concern was when I spoke with her in some of these images, there's plantings between the church and the Clark property. But if we plant something there, they're going to end up with mold and mildew all along the north side of their house because it's just too close and there wouldn't be enough air circulation. Okay. I'm just speaking from personal experience there. So, um, and obviously this is not a problem we solve now, but I, it is an, something really to be thought of because- and I did say, I did remind her that Austin said that they wouldn't develop a second floor. So there wouldn't be people like looking down on her, which I believe is one of their worries. So um, that it would only be a first floor development was likely, but, you know, obviously nothing is set in stone yet. But anyway, that's just, a, 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 so I said, you know, I sat down with her and we talked about that and she asked to be included um, when it was time to actually sit down and do real designs with architects. And I think that that is a really good idea. And um, maybe the Risleys too, because they're the immediate neighbors to the north, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would have more concern with the Risleys, I think. But whatever. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. But I, I looked at that and it clearly was a lot more than a broomstick. But... All right. Well, I, I will look at it too, so I have a better understanding. But um, is it something we're having Eaton mark the property line with some flags or some stakes, and then? Um... Uh, not yet. Okay. Not yet, I think. But um, I I because we aren't that far along. Yeah, but we, would... When we, but I agree, we should probably look at that eventually. There was something else I was going to say, but now flew out of my head that I learned from that meeting or that I heard in that meeting. Oh, well, if it comes back to me, I'll share it. If not, say what? In the planting, we can we can use ground cover and bulbs and low low vegetation to just have a bit of a buffer that would still allow air circulation. Um, I mean, it was definitely something that can be refined. As we go yeah, forward. I mean, I'm thinking it might be a uh, fence which would add sound, you know, some mm -hmm. sound to not be as pretty, but, um, but anyway, we'll have to, we just want to keep that in mind and keep, keep them in the loop. Mm -hmm. So that's what, um, but I, I agree. I heard pretty clearly people want senior housing. They're tired of waiting. <laughs> um, I, uh, so if we could get more units on that property and I understand we're, we're wrestling with the parking thing too and our coverage, but. Lily. Yeah. Um, I have an apology because um, we had a pretty serious family med uh, family emergency this week and I did not send out a reminder to yeah. the few people that I usually do about tonight's meeting. Well, we meet every Thursday. Yes. Yeah. And 
and they said it at the at that meeting too at the open house. yeah um that no apology necessary i appreciate what you do when whenever you can do it and you just reminded <laughs> me that the attendance sheets that that i got um i don't know if i got all of them but i think i did are sitting on my desk in Massachusetts and I'm in New Orleans. So, um, is that where you are? Yeah. And so, uh, the whole keep me in the loop thing, I'm afraid it's going to have to wait until I get back. There won't be much to report anyway. I think, you know, so. well, if I, if I remember correctly, looking at those sheets, um, very few people put email addresses. Oh, some of them put on phone numbers and quite a few people just didn't, didn't sign in. A number of people did not, not even, they didn't want to bother for whatever reason. I also, the other thing that, that, uh, that I, I was, there was one woman who did not believe me that it wouldn't affect our taxes and did not believe me, um, that we weren't going to tear the church down and things like that. So there was some of that too. Wow. I didn't, I didn't talk to anybody like that. Oh, I said, I, 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 and this was after I had done the explanation ahead of time, but there's some people who just um, think that we all lie for some reason, evidently. I, it's sad. I don't understand it. I'm not sure what they think we get out of it, but whatever. <laughs> More meetings. <laughs> anyway. Um, any anything else that people want to add about the open house? I was pleased with the number of people who showed up. That that was really good. Yeah, I think it was excellent turnout for. I agree with Pam for um, for conceptual drawings. It shows that people are definitely interested. Yes, and I think that um, Kathy did a great job posting that little poster on Facebook and Pam sent it out to the um, South Deerfield Women's Club and uh, Jennifer Remillard shared it with us in the senior center and put it in people's lunch bags even. So that was excellent. And that's a, it's good to know that that's a good way to reach people, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got that. I also think it dispelled the myth that we had one plan and that plan was the church is gone and yeah. nobody, you know, and we've already made that decision. Yeah. That's um, so hopefully people can trust that we're coming to them to get their input so that we can make the best decision for everybody. As much as, you know, we're not going to make it for everybody, I obviously. Make everybody we're, happy. Trying. Yeah. we're trying to listen to people and. Yep. Um, and let's talk for a moment about Bob Decker's offer, which we've all, already, he, um, Rachel, he had mentioned this uh, a few months ago, and I actually um, posted on the Facebook page and asked that, I mean, that this offer had been made, and did anybody want to um, take charge of this kind of a project? And And not one person said yes. Yeah. So the challenge is, um, you know, that's, that is a sweet notion and it's a wonderful offer. Who is going to do it? And nobody steps up. Do you know Barry Roberts? Are you familiar with him? No. He lives in Amherst. Um, he's a developer and he's been, I think I know of four old homes that he has moved out of the way for development. And he, it takes a while um, and he works at a kind of a slow pace. So they, they go to the site and you see them sit, sitting up on like risers and then he builds the basement around it and then he backfills. And um, so I've seen, seen him do that multiple times. I don't know if it'd be worth reaching out to him to see if he would work in Deerfield. Yeah, but Rachel, Rachel, I'm very familiar with the work that he's done in Amherst. In fact, I believe watched them move the house oh. that was down in downtown Amherst, where currently the um, what I still think of as the new police station is located. Um, they, they've moved a bunch of different houses. 
So the question is, who is going to pay him? Yeah. Where does that money come from? And who is going to be responsible for reaching out to him, you know, coordinating with the DPW, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I am not. I'm maxed out. Mm-hmm. That's not the that's not the purview of this committee. So that's right. Um, I I did ask on on Facebook, and it's a it is a wonderful offer, um, and and it would it would be it I mean it would make things a lot easier, but not if it's can't happen for two years or something. You know, there's there's some things around that. So anyway, unless somebody comes forward and says, I just won the lottery, I'll I'll pay for this. <laughs> we'll do it. I can't see it. So Bob Decker doesn't want to initiate that. No. no. I didn't get that sense. I mean, he made the offer of right. his land, which is pretty generous. Yes. Definitely. Of course, then the the buildings become his property. There's going to be a lot of maintenance there. Um, anyway. Um, all right. Well, I think that covers everything. Certainly covers everything I, I gathered. Anybody else? Hear anything else? No, I just I think it was really great that we do this, and I think that when we get more information and we do we do another, we do another step forward, then we do it again. I mean, more information as far as what we think we're going to do, what, what's out there. I, when I talked to Joe Comerford, she suggested that we bring out the housing secretary, Augustus there, or whatever his name is, and bring him out and offer to be a pilot. Because the housing policies, even though that housing bond bill and all the stuff is for supposed to encompass rural, here we're ready to go. And she she thinks that we should do that. And I I a pilot for what? For this development. We're, we'll offer to be a rural pilot. So that because we have she's finding that most communities don't want housing units. And I said, well, you know, we're trying to do senior housing. And she says, yeah, I mean, you have property, you want to go forward. And I said, yep, we do. So I I feel like we should reach out to the housing secretary and say, we got property, we got a plan, we want to make this work, help us. You know, what can you do to give us incentive for the developer to come and develop this so that we have more subsidized housing. You know, the the, the units can be more subsidized. I hmm. you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I mean that I just I haven't this week has gone by so wicked fast because I've just had so much stuff every single day. I haven't even been home to make a phone call, but I was gonna see if he could come out and see what we could do. Or you're going to reach out to him, you're saying? Yes, yes, Wh- whatever his name is. Gus, she's, she's, she told me his name. I, I just, I'm, right. it you it. I, you know, yep. I'm fried. It's yep. only Thursday, but <laughs> I'm even fried. Yeah, I think you got his name right. I can't remember his last name. He was in the paper for visiting another housing. Oh, right. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. She said just offer up us as an example of, you know, what, what could happen? I said, sure. I mean, we'd be glad to, we're ready to go. We're putting a lot of effort into this, making this happen. Yeah. So the worst thing they can say is no, we don't have time, but I think generally if, you know, it's getting spring, it's nice weather. It's not like in the middle of the winter. So if we said, would you like to come out and visit? He might come and you know, great. Yeah. You never know. Okay. I just I, I just think it's opportunity. So if it's okay with you guys, then I'll please do. Yeah, that's an idea. That's yeah, it is. It's a great idea, Carolyn. All right. All, right. Uh, all those in favor of Carolyn contacting <laughs> and see if she can scare up some money. Hi, Lily. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> Hi, Pam. All right. All right. Well, well 
All I right. just think the bond bill should may be made to work for us too. I agree. And, that, and that's our argument. Okay. This is this is us. So Okay, so next on the agenda is to review the scope of work for the procurement process. And um, then also I need instructions from the committee on what I should report out to CCI. So Rachel, I don't think you need to be here for, you're welcome to stay, but you're also welcome to resume your life. I had one more thing to share, is that okay? Oh yeah, please, yes, yeah, sorry. It's okay. Um, Austin Design went back and tried another building footprint after the meeting. Um, so this would be 30 units. This is option one, same church is still here. Parking is still 25, um, but this is what 30 units looks like on the site. So we're a little bit closer. Yeah. Actually, we're probably within the set. We would be within the setback. So that would not comply with setback requirements. Um, and then this this is a porch. Remember how he had the porches on the yeah, front? Yeah, I liked that, yeah. So this is a porch on the front and porch on the back. We'd actually recommend that he switch that porch. He said that he could um, because this is the line that we can't be any closer to. <laughs> <laughs> but we could we could move the porch over here. Yeah. Um, so that's that's something that we could take forward as we move into the next phase of um, investigation. And I guess that's the other question. I'm not sure if this is the right time to ask. Um, what would you, you know, we're at a point where we, um, we have geotech ready to go, to, um, to set up, um, borings. We have our civil engineer ready to go do some stormwater test pits and our geothermal consultant is a little bit backed up. He would want to be able Wait, to. Rachel, I thought geothermal was going off to the heat grant and not. Yeah. Not up. Okay. Okay. So, but, um. And and all the geo stuff is going. Um, Just the geothermal, the geotech is still in our. We do we still need to do that or with, what is, is the geotech for the geothermal? So the the, the geotechnical engineer really assists the structural engineer. It's all okay. about the bearing capacity of the soil, what kind of foundations you need, um, if you need to preload the site, things like that. Um, so if you have soils that require you to preload the site, you might have to pile up a soil for some period of time uh, to keep it from compressing too much when you finally build, or you have to have different types of footings. So that's really good to know about um, before. So that's what the geotech is. All right, thank um, you. And then the geothermal consultant through the heat grant still would be, I'm assuming would still be studying this project Yes, like number of units is orientation. So, hopefully but also, I mean, then it should go to the whole campus, not just this parcel. When we move it to the to the heat grant, because it's about the campus as okay. a as a um, living organism. <laughs> okay, so maybe maybe I could talk to. Um, Christopher. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you talk to Christopher because he's managing. Okay. Grant and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the the so the geotech, the stormwater, and possibly cost estimate. We're still trying to get a proposal for that. Um, those three scopes would be based upon whatever you guys direct us to, which option or version of an option that you would like us to to pursue in those studies. It doesn't have to be precise i hope yeah 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 but it would be good to know that yeah, generally yeah yeah like are we digging borings over here well obviously not where the rectory is right now but are we digging borings here in the, in the front yard are we doing stormwater stuff over here because if we were going to do if we were going to look at something more like option an option three um which i haven't heard any no, we're not going to do option three. I don't think it's too okay. complicated. At all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if we went and did something like option two, then we'd probably want to get some borings over here too, versus something that's. Yeah. I, I just, I don't, I just, my feeling is on option three. It's not that it long term, it wasn't going to be a good one. It's just that, unfortunately, I think because it involves the entire campus and moving around buildings and stuff, and the library's not going to be done. and 
has it just is more complicated if we stick to saint james we have a better chance of getting it done sooner mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep um so but option two is the is the elbow right yeah All right so um it, it, and, and, want, and that new one you just showed us <laughs> is yeah. option one plus or something right and yeah. the difference between that is that it comes closer to the street yeah the and it also goes further to the back so this one observes the front setback actually might be really close to what was before but this so the previous one it sort of was just shy of the parking lot the proposed parking lot. So this is the 22 units with the um, lobby area and the elevator. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this one. Huh. It is it is a similar footprint. I guess he put the porch on the on this side. And he's oh that's right. He also um built up uh, uh units in the in the gable. Ah. So this is using that. So the roof is still the same the, height, but then the there's a the table. So it's not the full footprint. Yeah. Um, you squeezed in some spaces up here. Okay. And would you still have three units in the church with that design? Uh, we could. So then it'd be 33 units. In okay. So you don't need to. I mean, okay. Yeah, but we got to use the building for something. Because... Yeah, we can't just. Yeah. Leave. I mean, you could put in more parking. So right. So in this case, if we have thirty-three units and twenty-five spaces, that might be a little tough. Um, but be nice. put in more parking, meaning take the church out. I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah. Oh. No. I think it's going to be good to leave the church there because that's a that's going to look like a massive building. Yeah. It will not be well loved i did hear that yeah somebody felt uh, somebody came up to me and said they thought sanderson was a hideous massive thing which i do not agree with but that's but they they said it would be really inappropriate it said the good thing about it is it's way in the back so it doesn't like you know isn't loom over everything and, but this would be way in the front so so yeah and you're mo moving into the parking into the front too yeah. I don't, you know, I understand you have to do that, but honestly, from a visual point of view, that would be kind of gross. Yeah. I think it'd be nice if the parking was behind. Yeah. This line. Yep. So maybe we just stick to option one and if we have to, we could go up, but I don't know. Yeah. We also, we had to rely on five spaces here also in option yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of similar to what's happening with, with the library too, that the, those parking spaces are there. Um, yeah. But I agree, it would be nice if they could all be back here. Yeah. Okay, well, um, so you need to know where to do the geotech borings, right? Yeah. Okay, so, um, what does everybody think about can we get geotech borings to since we 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 can't you know know specifically where it's going to be but for both the option two elbow footprint and and the option one footprint and there and there's a big intersection there right a lot of option like the front one, yeah would be yeah both of them and then maybe there's a couple it, yeah, going up along the brook. Yeah. And maybe we do we do a couple here too. I think yeah. they have a total of four in their pro proposal. That's what they had for four borings. So maybe how many, how many borings is it like you need to do one boring per X number of square feet of coverage or something? Or it's like in the corners typically, they're like in the corners of the building. Um, just to get a sense of what you would be encountering with the foundation. Um, so I guess what we're talking about then is six borings, right? If we want to 
add the opportunity for the elbow. Yeah. But it can somebody tell me what a geotech boring is? Sure. <laughs> um there's a there's a drill. If I were better at Googling, I could Google well, maybe I could try. Um there's a there's a drill that goes up and they it's like maybe maybe four inches diameter a caisson that goes into the ground. They drill down to get a core sample of the soil. Okay. Um and then they analyze based upon let's see if I can see you. Go to images, yeah. There yeah. you go. Can you can you all see my screen still? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um so they go down, they core down, and then they pull up a lot they call it a soil log. See this is the this is the it's like what they do in the they used to do in the polar regions when we had ice up there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured, but I'm like, why are you doing that after we, I thought we would have already done that. No, no, we want to do like, depending where the building goes, we'd want to put it underneath wherever the building goes. So I see of know course. conceptually where you want the building to go before you do it. Other course, the yeah, borings right. that we did were soil borings for uh, wetlands and, and wet and uh, floodplain delineations and stuff. That's what that was so. So oh, you're right, Kathy. We did do borings before. Okay. Right. And Thank then there you. were test pits, and then there, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Everybody. Yeah. So this is this is what the wetland scientist was doing, using an auger. So it's a much more low tech, uh, device. And of course, the one I clicked on did not take us back there. Um, Prepare for oh. delineation day. Building image. That works. So this is this is the auger that the wetland scientist uses, a hand auger, mm -hmm. and then go down. And so they're looking much much shallower profile. Um, but the the geo the geotech pouring um, it, it is a, it is a really narrow slice. So one of the things that can happen, and hopefully it's not, is that if you have really inconsistent soil um, types. You can, you can have a slow, you, you know, you're only, it's like this big area and you're using like one little four inch sliver to represent the whole. Um, sometimes you can, things can be a little bit different than what the geotech boring tells you, but a lot of the times it's spot on from, you know, what, what to expect. So there's always that, um, but it's a way to kind of get a sense of what it will take structurally to support. How deep do they go down, Rachel? Is um, that like two feet? Or I've feet? seen I've seen 20 feet before. We'd have we can clarify with Ashley how deep they go. Um, sometimes they stop when they hit bedrock too, but I don't well, know. they're more likely to hit the water table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, All right. So um could you find out how much it would cost to add two geotech borings sure. to, to that? And um, yeah, I think that would, does everybody agree that we probably want to at least check that so that if that's what the design comes back as? Yes. Yeah. I think it can't hurt. I mean, we're still trying to figure this out. And if you can get more units, why not? And I think going at an angle is kind of interesting. I mean, you make interest in the building. It does make a building look more interesting too and feel less like a Lego, <laughs> yeah. giant Lego. <laughs> I know. I mean, that's that's what people didn't want really if, if they could help it, you know, giant, awful building. But you can put clapboards on it. You can make it look yep. better. Yes. For money, you can do many things. I know. Um, okay. So we're, it, it's getting late. Is that, Rachel, have you got anything else you need from us or want to share with us? No, oh, no. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming tonight. It's been really helpful. Good. And thanks. And Rachel, thank you for doing the other night, seriously, especially yeah. when people are yelling at you to speak louder. 
<laughs> no problem. We're very, you were very nice, and I appreciate and, that. And it wasn't just you, Rachel. That it was the other presenters as well. It was it was difficult for you guys, and and I'm grateful that you all hung in there for us. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad that people, I hope people felt, I really hope people felt like they were heard. I mean, not I, the speakers, but like the, the public members of the public who were there, I really hope they felt like they were heard and, and their opinions were valued. So I think so. I, mean, I, think, yeah. I think it depends on what we do with it. If right. We, <laughs> if we disregard <laughs> it and put up a five-story building, I don't think they're going to feel <laughs> very heard. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So Rachel, um, I will be in touch with you about the um, uh, the what we need for the RFP. Um, we need to talk about. We have a scope of work for the procurement process from FERCOG that uh, we've gotten approval from the CPC to retain them to make sure that our RFP is appropriate and stuff um so we've got to we got to hammer that up but we're not going to do it tonight y'all it we're we're sort of tapped out so we'll, they'll have to wait till the beginning of april um and i will get back to you rachel on okay. yeah you'll get back to me on on the cost to add the board okay. so that. Oh, great thank you thank you thank you so much have a good night thank um, you rachel thanks rachel so y'all, let's skip the uh, review, the scope of work for the procurement process. But I do want to know, um, so CCI meets next week. We do not, we will meet the week after. And I will be reporting out to CCI. And um, Carolyn, do we have a closing date for the St. James property? Do not yet. Not okay. yet. Um, uh, it's going to be before the in the next two weeks or so. Okay, in the next two weeks. That's kind of what I thought. Okay, so I'll I can just say that generally speaking, um, and then uh, we can talk about doing the open house and that we're moving forward on the procurement process. Anything else I should bring to them? Okay. Um, I have a commitment of a the housing secretary to come out. I'll let you know, Lily. That would be great. But you can tell everybody in CCI. <laughs> that would be great, right? Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to report that to CCI. We're going to do talk about the open house, and the closing will be sometime in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, that's about it. Okay. Uh. There's no public to comment, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Make that motion, Carolyn. Second. second. <laughs> that unanimous second. Okay. All those in favor. Pam Predmore. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Aye. Kathy Sylvester. Aye. Billy Dwight. Aye, aye, aye. All right. We are adjourned at 6.56. 7.56. 7.56. 7.56.